good day friends and family on Facebook. Since this week's opening ceremony in the Olympics in Japan, I really love the human pictograms part so much. I felt that I should share this quick homemade video to share a little history about the Olympics and Malaysia's part in it. I feel that there's just too little coverage on our athletes. Our young kids don't even know who our athletes are. There's just too little support and recognition for all the effort and sacrifice. I hope to change all of that starting with this little homemade video. Now the Olympics started way back in Greece in this place called Olympia way back in 776. That's right, that's 700 years before the calendar was even zero. Now Greek city-states were always fighting among themselves back then, but when it comes to the Olympics, even though it was held once every four years, everybody stops to let the athletes pass. That's right. Nobody, and I do mean nobody, touches the athletes. It was big sin. You can kill your neighbors, but you can't touch the athletes. This lasted for a thousand years under 393 AD when it was stopped suddenly, not by the Greeks themselves, but by the Romans. They conquered Greece in the second century BC. They let it run for a little while more, and then a Roman emperor decided to say, ban it. What a dick. And then 1500 years later, a French guy by the name of Baron Pierre de Coubertin ignited the flame for the first modern Olympics. And the first games were held in Athens, Greece in 1896. What a man. Now the five rings of the Olympic logo that you see represents the continents of North and South America. Yeah, that's one ring. I don't know why. Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia. What about New Zealand, guys? Now we are all familiar with the traditional opening ceremony, but there wasn't one until 1924 when the Olympics in Paris actually had the very first closing ceremony. I guess all the while before that, they just finished the sports, packed up and went home. Awkward. Now it was also the very first year that the Winter Olympics was introduced, 1924, same year as the Summer Olympics and the Winter Olympics. Now ever since then, it was always held on the same year until 1992. That's pretty recent. Wait, wait, that's almost 30 years ago. <gasps> I'm that old. Since 1992, it was decided that it was going to be Summer Olympics, two years later, Winter Olympics, and then two years later, Summer Olympics. Not necessarily the same location because some places don't have snow. Now, I wouldn't be doing justice if I didn't mention about the other Olympics, the Paralympics, an equally important event where athletes with intellectual and physical disabilities can compete. It's usually held right after the conventional Olympics. Now, Malaysia first competed as Malaya in 1956 in Melbourne. We gain our independence in 57, so subsequently all our participations, we went in as Malaysia. My utmost respect to the pioneers of this very first Malaysian Olympians. This is the lineup of our very first hockey team then. We also had other many pioneers in that batch. Even our very first female Olympian, Annie Chong who went shop to shop asking for donations for training and for a ticket to Melbourne along Jalan Tunku Adaraman. Back then it was known as Bati Road and shopkeepers willingly, wholeheartedly, happily donated money for her to train and compete in Melbourne. In fact, this gentleman right here in the picture with her is none other than Jesse Owens, the star of the 1936 Olympics in Berlin before World War II the man himself. Ever since then, there were many other pioneers, but it wasn't until 1992 when Malaysia won its first medal when the Sidi brothers, Razif and Jalani Sidi, brought home the first ever medal, a bronze one for badminton from Spain. Now, in case you're wondering, other than fame and glory in representing Malaysia, are there any financial gains that will help support our athletes when they retire? Well, there is. Majlis Sukanegara or the National Sports Council of Malaysia had informed me a long time ago that before anyone gets to the international level, it's only fair they are good enough to be on the national teams. Athletes are usually paid around 800 to 1000 ringgit a month as basic allowance when they train with our NSC. 800 ringgit, well, that's like 200 US dollars a month. Of course, with more wins at the state, national, and regional levels, it goes up. But 
How much? Well, a win at the regional levels can see a athlete's allowance get bumped up to 3,000 or 3,005, depending whether they won a bronze or silver, a goal would be much more. So please, support your local athletes before they make it big. There are hundreds of athletes in all 13 states, with many of them with allowances as low as 700 ringgit a month, who hasn't made it big. That's less than 200 US dollars a month. Even our very first Olympic figure skater trains in a shopping mall nearby. He's going to compete for the Winter Olympics, maintaining an ice ring in a tropical country like here. No one does it except maybe for shopping malls to attract customers, but it is small and he made do with what he got. But at the Olympics, the incentive gets a whole lot different. On top of sponsors, scholarships and titles, winning bronze gets 100,000 ringgit a reward, silver medalist gets 300,000, and gold medal winners get a whopping million. And that's more. Bronze winners gets a lifetime pension of 2,000 ringgit a month for life, silver 3,000 a month for life, and gold medalist winners gets a whopping 5,000 ringgit for life. To put in context, that's like enough to get a brand new latest iPhone every month for life. Wow. So that brings us to the very, very interesting question of how many medals have Malaysia won ever since the City Brothers amazing win in 1992? Well, the total is 11. That's right. Before the Tokyo Olympics, we have only won 11 medals, 11 hard earned medals, seven silver medals and four bronze medals. But no gold yet. <gasps> no gold medal yet? Yes, that's right. Eight from badminton, two in diving, and one in cycling. So therefore, only three sports we have excelled in enough to compete and beat a lot of people from around the world, five of which which was won in 2016 alone, but still no gold medal yet. Now, since 1992, we only won badminton medals for a long time. Until 2012, we actually won a diving medal thanks to Pandalena Rinong which won the diving event in London and we only had these two sports with medals until 2016 to include cycling medals thanks to Azizo Hasni Awang this dude actually finished a race that was not in the Olympics in Manchester in 2011 third place with a splinter in his leg he is the man now, in this year's Japan Olympics, we have 30 athletes competing in archery, athletics, badminton, of course, cycling, diving, golf, gymnastics, sailing, shooting, and swimming. Once again, I'm very proud to say that our athletes are getting better on the world stage. I just hope that everyone supports them, win or lose, they did their best, they sacrificed. I only wish they had more coverage on our athletes and coaches. There are many, many who didn't make the cut. All have given up their time, their families, given up lucrative jobs, so much sweat and tears just to train to represent us. The least we can do is to spend a little time to support them. Links in the description below and the times that you can tune in to support and watch our athletes perform. We hope this year in Japan, we can finally, finally bring home our very first Malaysian Olympic gold medal. I'm Dennis and hope you like this family homemade video and I'll see you guys another time. Thanks for watching and good luck Team Malaysia.